Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on land technology comparison. Today we're going to be talking about some of the properties of the Ethernet LAN and then some Ethernet LAN standards. And with that, let's go ahead and begin today's session. So we need to begin by talking about some properties of the Ethernet LAN. So let's begin by talking specifically about Ethernet. Now, Ethernet is a LAN and MAN metropolitan area network technology, not a WAN technology. It was commercially introduced in 1980 and standardized by the IEEE as 802.3 in 1983. Now, Ethernet does have several different access technology methods. And the first one is CSMA CD. Carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. Now this is specifically associated with the IEEE's 802.3 Ethernet standard. Now in a CSMACD environment, all the nodes listen to the carrier signal before they transmit, or even while they are transmitting. And if a collision occurs on a segment, then the nodes will wait and then retransmit their packets. Then there is the CSMA CA access technology. That's carrier sense, multiple access with collision avoidance. More often than not, this is associated with the IEEE's 802.11 standard. That's wireless. In this case, the nodes listen to the carrier. If there is traffic, then the node waits before sending to avoid collisions altogether. So we talked about collisions, now let's discuss what a collision domain is. A definition of collision domains is that all the nodes located on a single shared network segment, and it's where all traffic is seen and heard on the segment. Collision domains are broken up by switches, bridges, and routers. Collision domains are not broken up by hubs. Collision domains are different from broadcast domains. A definition of a broadcast domain are all the nodes that are located on a common subnet. Routers break up broadcast domains. All nodes in the subnet receive broadcast transmissions. That's what makes up a broadcast domain. Now, Ethernet does have some distance limitations. When using twisted pair, each segment is limited to 100 meters without a repeater. If you're in a coaxial LAN environment, first off, I'll say it's time to update in most cases, but your distance is limited to either 185 or 500 meters, depending upon the coaxial cable that is used. Now, fiber optic LAN transmissions are limited by the type of cable that is used. The current maximum is 40 kilometers over single mode fiber. Now let's introduce bonding. Bonding is taking two or more links to create a single path that's using multiple network interfaces and cables and making them look and act like a single unit. You use bonding to create greater bandwidth. You also use bonding to create greater redundancy. It's kind of a fail-safe in case one of the interfaces or cables goes bad. Now let's move on to the actual Ethernet LAN standards. There's going to be a fair amount of information on this that you're going to need to remember. And of course, we begin with the most basic that everyone should be familiar with, and that's twisted pair cable. Let's begin with 10 base T. That's 10 megabits per second over unshielded twisted pair. That requires a minimum of a Cat3 cable. Then there's 100 base T. That's 100 megabits per second and you need to use CAT5. Then there's 1000 base T. That's one gigabit per second, and it requires a minimum of a CAT5E cable. Then there's 100 base TX, that's 100 megabits per second, using two pair of wire over a minimum of CAT5 cabling. Then there's 10G base T, that's 10 gigabits per second, and that requires a minimum of a CAT6 cable. If you use CAT6, you're limited to only 40 meters. But if you use a CAT6A cable, you can get the 100 meter maximum distance. There is a multi-cable standard, 
that's usually called 1000 base X, and it can be broken out into three subcategories. There's 1000 base SX, that's one gigabit over short distance multimode fiber. That usually is less than two kilometers in distance. Then there's 1000 base LX. That's one gigabits over long distance single mode fiber. And those runs are greater than two kilometers. By the way, if you see a standard that has an SX or an LX, SX stands for short distance and it's always multi-mode fiber, and LX is long distance, and it always means single-mode fiber. Then there's 1000 CX, that's one gigabit per second over a coaxial cable, and you can only run those up to 25 meters. Now let's move on to 10 gigabit networking. This is going to get fairly redundant. There's 10G base SR. That is Ethernet transmissions over multi-mode fiber up to 300 meters. Then there's 10G base LR. That is Ethernet transmissions over single mode fiber up to 10 kilometers. There's 10G base ER, extended range. That's Ethernet transmissions over single mode fiber up to 40 kilometers. 10G base SW is transmissions over multi-mode fiber up to 300 meters, it is SONNET compatible. 10G base LW uses single mode fiber. It can go up to 10 kilometers, also SONNET compatible. There's 10G base EW, transmissions over single mode fiber. Those go up to 40 kilometers, also SONNET compatible. Then we have an anomaly in the standard, and that's 10G base LX4. This can be either single mode fiber or multi mode fiber. And the distance that it goes is dependent upon which type of cable you use. Single mode fiber goes up to 300 meters, and multi mode fiber goes up to 10 kilometers. And finally, we have 10G base CX4. This is infinity band copper cabling, and it can go up to 15 meters. It's usually used within the LAN to connect high-speed, high-bandwidth switches and routers. Now that concludes this session on LAN technology comparison. We talked about some properties of the Ethernet LAN, and then I brought up a whole bunch of LAN standards. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session. Sorry for boring you, and we'll do another one soon.